My name is Father Conan Gill. I am the Proestaminos priest at St. George Greek Orthodox Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I grew up in the Church of Christ, a Stone Campbell movement, very conservative. My family was uh, always a very believing family, a practicing family. We read, my dad read us scriptures at night, we read the Bible, we prayed before our meals, we always attended church. I wanted to learn as much as I could about the church, and I remember my Sunday school teachers telling me, saying, you know, Conan, you just really learn your Bible, really read that, and so I did, and I had questions about it, and because the Bible's not easy to understand, and so I'd ask him questions, and went up to him, and I said, you know, I have a question, I said, how come our church doesn't, our worship service doesn't really look like what's presented in the Bible, and he goes, what are you talking about? And I said, well, we don't have an altar, we don't have priesthood, we don't have incense, and um, I don't understand that. And he goes, oh, that's because we're the New Testament church. And I go, what does that mean? And he goes, well, that other stuff you're talking about is Old Testament stuff, but we're in the New Testament. And I said, well, I just got finished reading the book of Revelation and it has all that. It has a priesthood. It has altars. It has incense, vestments, and, um, and we don't have any of that. So I'm kind of lost. And I go, and that's in the New Testament. And he said, well, I think it's better that you don't ask questions. And when I was told that, that's when I kind of shut down. And I said, I really started having doubts, not about who Christ was, but about how I was worshiping him. And I really started getting interested in the other churches that were around, the other denominations. Uh, I had friends who were Roman Catholic, so I would, I would ask if I could spend the night, you know, at their house and go to church with them because I was allowed to spend the night with somebody as long as they were going to church. So that's what I did. I, I really started, I start, started looking around. It wasn't until I got into college and um, I started going through um, a catechism through the Roman Catholic Church that I found the Orthodox Church. You know, before that, I just thought, I was like, the Orthodox Church, okay, there's Greek Orthodox Church, the Rom Romanian Orthodox Church, the Russian Orthodox Church, I've heard of all these, but I thought that they were just ethnic Roman ca Catholics, and I didn't know that there was a difference. When I first heard about the Orthodox Church, I said, wow, I'll just, you know what, I'll just go to these lands, I'll go to Greece, and I'll see the Greek Orthodox Church. So I, I bought a ticket, from a company which defrauded me, so I didn't get to go. And I was so bummed that I told my, my parents, I was like, ah, really wanted to see what the Orthodox Church was like. And they said, well, there's an Orthodox Church five miles away from your house. And I go, no, 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 there can't be. I was like, you know, these churches don't exist here. And he goes, oh, and my parents said, of course they do. So, they, so I was like, wow, I looked it up, and I said, well, I go, I'm going to go to the Orthodox Church. And I told all my friends and my family, I was like, this Sunday I'm going to the Orthodox Church. Well, that Sunday came, pulled up into the parking lot, and I, and I saw these people go into the church, and I said to myself, I said, well, I'm not Greek, you know, so maybe, maybe I wouldn't be welcome in the church. And so I just went across, there was a park across the street from the church, I sat there and I drank a Coke, and I watched people come and go, but I, didn't, I never stepped foot in. And so that night, I had dinner with my, my, my family, my parents, because we always had Sunday dinner together. And they said, what was the Orthodox Church like? And I go, you know, I don't know. I was too scared. I didn't go in. And my mom said, that's crazy. She goes, you'll go next week. And I go, okay. So the next week came, I did the same thing. I did the same thing for three weeks in a row. And finally, my parents said, I wasn't welcome at their dinner table until I walked into the church and could report to them about the Orthodox Church. The next week, I got there really early. I watched the priest go in. And I said, well, he'll be nice to me. He's a priest. And so I walked in right after him. There was a guy sitting there. He saw me and he goes, he was from Greece. His name was Jimmy. And he goes, have you ever been into an Orthodox church? And I said, no, this is my first time. And I said, but I've read about it. And he goes, come in. And he gave me a big hug. And I was kind of taken back. And because I didn't know this guy. And he goes, and he goes, look, here are the icons. And I go, oh, I've read about them. And he goes, you don't read them, you kiss them. And, and he showed me, he goes, mmm, mmm, mmm. he started kissing all the icons and invited me to do the same thing. And then, and then he goes, here's where we light candles. And, 
he lit a candle and he put it into the sand. He goes, here's one for you. And, and, and I lit one and I said a prayer for all those people that I love and I hate. And I put it in the sand. And he stayed with me and he showed me how the liturgy worked. And as soon as it opened up, I knew I was home. I just was like, this is everything that I've read in the Bible played out in front of me. I'm home. And it just took that one time. And uh, after the service, they introduced me to the priest. And I said, I said, Father, I'm going to come back next week. And I'm going to join this church. And he goes, whatever. (laughs) He's like, good to have you. Next week I was there, the following, and I never left. I never left. Became very active in the church. I taught Sunday school. I um, taught youth ministry. I became a member of the parish council. And finally one day the congregation... They asked me, they said, you know, you should go to seminary. And I said, no. I was like, I have a nice career as an accountant. I don't think I should do that. Three years later, I end up at seminary. So here I am today. When I was growing up, <clears throat> I had really bad teeth. I had buck teeth. In fact, my dad would tell me, he would say, boy, you can eat corn on a cob through a picket fence. That's how bad your teeth are. And I said, daddy, what am I going to do about that? And he goes, we're going to go see the orthodontist. And I said, the orthodontist? What's the orthodontist? And he said, orthodontist is the doctor who gives you straight teeth. He makes your teeth straight. The Orthodox Church makes our faith straight. It makes our faith straight. It's right glory, right worship. That's what the word means. And so, That's what it gives us. And that's the reason we come to the Orthodox Church, because we're looking for straight, correct, and right worship. And that's what we find in the Orthodox Church. It is the church given to us by Christ. It is kept by the apostles, passed down to the bishops and the priests, and it's presented to us. The Divine Liturgy is the ultimate mystery of the church. Uh, In the West... They call it a sacrament. But in the East, we understand it as a mystery. It's something that we don't completely understand, but it's our way of worshiping God. And through this mystery, Christ becomes present. He is invisibly present here with us. In fact, it says in Scripture, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. So when we come together to worship Him, which is a form of worship that was first given to the Jews and then made Christ and then Christ centered um, and given to us by Christ and the apostles it's through that worship that we actually have the opportunity to take in the body and the blood of Christ to have Christ flowing in our veins and to become part of him so it's a great mystery but it's how we worship. It's how we become one with Christ and with one another. It's a rich blessing. Well, holy tradition is, is, is the teachings and the understandings given to us by Christ and the apostles, passed down to the apostles, passed down to the bishops and the priests. But, you know, some people will say, oh, the only thing we can have is Scripture, just the Bible only. You know, KJV only, baby, is what I've heard a lot of people say, you know, but that's not true. The Bible is not the Quran. It wasn't just passed down from heaven. You know, somebody had to write it. And did the the Bible write the church or did the church write the Bible? Believers wrote the Bible. And we didn't even have the Bible for at least 50 years, you know, since Pentecost. So how did people know how to worship? How did they know how to believe? How did they know how to act? It's through holy tradition. It's through the passing down. And even even St. Paul says, he says, he says, do what I tell you to do by word or by letter. So that's it. So holy tradition is the word. You know, that's what has been handed down uh, from Christ himself. We read about the two, you know, the two disciples Luke and Cleopas, you know, walking down and what Christ comes to them and what does he do? He unbraids the gospels for them. He explains things. It's his talking about his fulfillment of the law and the prophets. That has become the holy, that is our holy tradition. That's what's been passed down through the church.